Hi, I'm Mike McConville, Director of New Category Development with Horizon Hobby. And I'm here today to show you how to assemble our new uh, Hobby Zone uh, Sportsman S Plus. Um, assembly is very fast, very easy. Uh, takes, it will take just a matter of a couple of minutes. Before we get into it, let's kind of start at one end and describe all the parts uh, just so it, it's clear what everything that comes in the box is used for. Um, some is pretty obvious. The transmitter, DX4E, is the controller that you use to control the airplane. Um, the major parts, the wing, the fuselage, the tail, also wing struts and landing gear. The small parts maybe aren't as clear, but uh, very easy to install and uh, again just take seconds. So these, these plastic parts are used to install the landing gear. Um, these are, are clear plastic pieces of tape which uh, hold the horizontal tail on the airplane. Um, there's two, set, two sizes of screws. Um, we always supply extras with a Hobby Zone airplane, so uh, you're not actually going to use all of them. The big screws, there's four of them supplied, you only need two. They're used to install the wing struts under the wing. Um, the small screws, there's six supplied, you only need four. These hold the main landing gear in place. So we'll set aside the parts that we're not going to use. Um, a bind plug. If you bought a ready-to-fly airplane, uh, it, it should already be bound, meaning that the receiver is bound to the transmitter. You don't have to do anything. But if for some reason it's not, rebinding is a very quick, easy process, um, nothing to get worried about. And if you bought a bind and fly, of course, you're going to use your own transmitter and you'll need to bind it to the airplane. So that's the reason for the plug to be uh, included. Uh, rubber bands are used to attach the wing to the fuselage when you get to the flying field. Um, there's some extras supplied here also. In here, hard to see, but there are four pieces of silicone tubing. Um, these are actually extras. Uh, what they are used for is to hold the linkages onto the uh, control surface. It uh, just keeps the clevis in place so it can't pop loose, but they're already on the airplane. These are just extras should one get lost for some reason. Um, we have uh, a few pieces of Velcro. These are uh, extras. They're actually used to attach to if you're if you're buying a, another flight battery to stick to the bottom of the battery to hold it in place in the airplane. So hang on to those because as you get flying, you're probably going to want to get some extra extra batteries and you'll want to use those. The double A's are to power the transmitter. Um, the LiPo battery is a 3S 1300 milliamp battery. That's to power the airplane. Um, lastly, we have the the charging. Um, we have a DC charger. This plugs into a cigarette lighter, uh, car utility type plug, uh, and an AC adapter. So if you want to charge it using uh, AC power, you know, from your house, um, it, it very simply plugs into the charger and you've got an AC charging solution. Um, and that's it. It's uh, not a whole lot in the box other than the instruction manual, which I do want to stress to read. Um, operation of the, of the Sportsman is simple. Uh, but there are a lot of features and a lot of cool technology in here that you really need to understand how it works and this is all described in the manual as of course is everything I'm going to show you here in the next couple of minutes. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and get your flight battery on charge so that when we've got the airplane together you've got a battery ready because I'm sure you're dying to get out to the flying field and fly this thing as soon as possible. So very simple. Um, charger is plugged in either into a cigarette lighter or into the AC adapter. Um, simply take the, uh, the, the white plug and plug into the uh, receptacle on the charger and that's it. It starts charging automatically. The light on the charger tells you when it's charged. So first step in the uh, assembly is to, is to install the landing gear. Um, very simple. It takes a uh, Five parts plus the screws. One part, major part, of course, the landing gear inserts into the slot in the bottom of the fuselage. Um, next step is to install the, uh, the, the plastic landing gear fairings. Now, it's hard to see, but it is marked on the inside left and right, because uh, there is a left and there is a right, and it's important to get them on the correct side. Okay, so we'll start with the left one. We just slide it over the landing gear strut, snap it into place, and make sure that the two holes line up with the screw holes underneath it that we'll use in a second. Take the one marked right, do the same thing, snap it in place. Now it looks like it's there, but the landing gear is not attached yet. Okay, next we install the landing gear straps. These are the little plastic pieces, and again, they're molded uh, left and right, is marked on the inside, and that's important because they are, they are specific. They fit in place on the landing gear 
and you have to orient them the correct direction. It should be pretty obvious when you put them in place because everything lines up well. Put those in place over the holes and over the landing gear and then we install one screw into each hole, so two screws on each strap. And then we tighten them up and I should mention the one tool that you need to use to assemble the, uh, the Sportsman is a Phillips screwdriver, um, just a small Phillips screwdriver, not really critical, but you will need to, to have one of those with you as you uh, assemble the airplane. And that's just to put in these, these quick six screws. So there's two of them. Now we'll repeat the same thing for the right side. Use our other plastic strap that is marked R. Put it in place on, over the gear and lined up with the holes. And install the screws and tighten them down. Now when you tighten these down, um, it's, it's important to get them plenty snug, but you don't want to over tighten them because you are, you are screwing into plastic. So if you really try to bear down on it, you could strip the holes. Um, they're, pretty, they're pretty good and it would take a lot to strip them, but just keep in mind they don't have to be overly tight because there's not a lot of load on them in that direction. So as long as they're just nice and snug, the gear is going to stay on forever. And that's it for the landing gear. Next step is to install the stabilizer. So this is probably even faster than the landing gear. You can see that there's a, uh, a molded recess in the top and bottom of the stab so that it positions itself as you slide it in. There's a plastic housing on the uh, fuselage that slides right into that recess so everything lines up perfectly. Um, that's it in place. The next thing is simply to to attach the stab and that is done using these four pieces of clear tape. Really quick, really simple. We put one on each side top, one on each side on the bottom. So just remove the back. We can throw that away and we simply put this in place so it's half on the plastic fairing which is attached to the fuselage and half on the stab. And just rub it in place to, to adhere the adhesive and we are we're done with that one. The Sportsman is not a real big airplane, so there's really no need to ever take the tail back off unless perhaps you're traveling and you want to take it back apart and put it in the box and just reverse this process. To get these off, you can either use a hobby knife and just, just get under the corner and pull them or just, just very carefully cut them and just put new tape over the top. Um, there's nothing special about the tape, so if for some reason you do take the tail off and then you want to put it back on, get some scotch tape uh, or some type of clear uh, clear cellophane tape and just put it back on like this. So those are the top two on. The bottom, same same as the top. Um, the plastic fairing is a, quite a bit narrower on the bottom of the uh, fuselage so it's a little bit more critical to make sure you get you do get the plastic actually on the or the, the tape actually on the plastic. And do the last one. and the tail's on. Now the last part you need to do when you assemble the, uh, the, the tail is to hook up the uh, push rod so that you actually have elevator control. Um, to do this, uh, the important part here is the outer hole. And the outer hole is important. The, it changes the geometry of the push rod if you move it in and you get more control authority and the airplane doesn't fly the way it's supposed to. Uh, so just pry it open a little bit, put it in the outer hole and then slide the uh, silicone keeper back toward the uh, horn as far as it'll go, and that's it. That's the fuselage completely assembled. Okay, so next we'll put the struts on the wing. This is a really quick thing to do. Um, you have the wing, have the struts, and the two larger screws. Um, one thing to note is that the struts are marked right and left, just like the landing gear part. It's molded inside the uh, uh, inside the strut right above the, uh, the ball that will attach to the fuselage later. So this is the right one. So this goes on the right side. Again, it's the right side of the airplane as I would be sitting in the cockpit if I could get in the airplane. So the right side is of course on my left right now because the wing's upside down. So it's simple. Just put the screw through the strut, the slot in the strut in the in the uh, hole in the wing and tighten it up. Again, you don't want to over tighten this. 
I like to set them so that they're snug but, and then back them off just a little bit so that if I put some pressure, it'll slide just a little bit. That still gives the wing all the support it needs, but it allows them to slide a little bit so that they don't bow uh, by getting them uh, set too close. They'll move and kind of set themselves. Um, do the same thing with the one mark left. Put the screw through the slot. and screw into the wing. Again, tighten it all the way and then back it off just a little bit so that I can move it if I apply some pressure. And that's it, the wing's ready to put on the fuselage. Okay, and the final part of assembly is putting the wing on the fuselage. This is hardly even uh, assembly of the airplane because this is something you probably will do every time you go fly, uh, unless you have a big vehicle where you can put the airplane in one piece, uh, meaning leaving the wing on. You probably will want to take the wing off to transport it to and from the, uh, uh, the, the flying field. Um, it's seconds uh, and very simple. So all we do, um, position the wing over the fuselage, and then we connect the aileron servos to the uh, receiver. There are two plugs in the receiver coming out of the receiver that you can see. Um, the important thing here is just lining up the colors, orange to orange, red to red, brown to brown and plug them in. It doesn't matter which one. The plugs coming out of the receiver are a Y harness, meaning um, it's the same signal going to both. So it doesn't matter at all. So plug them in, make sure the colors are lined up and they're plugged in securely. And then just tip the wing down in place. Um, and when you do this, make sure the wires stay inside and you don't get one trapped between the wing and the fuselage. Um, position the wing over the fuselage and then we hold it in place with uh, a few rubber bands. Um, centering it is important, but it's also very easy because it, it lines itself up. You can see this molded plastic piece lines up with the fuselage contour, so very easy to line up. And in the front, the, uh, the painted windshield lines up, so it pretty much aligns itself. Then we put on, it's best to put rubber bands on from the front going back, and the reason for this is when you put them on from the front going back, it puts more pressure on the front than it does in the back. And as an airplane flies and a wing tries to lift, it tries to lift in the front. So you want the most pressure holding it to the fuselage on the front side so that the, the wing can't lift off the fuselage. So and it's better to crisscross them on this airplane. And we'll put two on each side, so four total. And that's the wing held to the fuselage. The last thing to do is attach the struts to the fuselage. These are a uh, very quick at to attach and release. Uh, it's a little ball socket and you can see there's a little uh, ball on the fuselage. Simply press it over and snap in place. We'll do the same to this side. Press it over, snap in place. And that's it. The airplane is completely assembled and ready to fly. Now I will, I will show one little trick is if you're done flying you want to take it back apart. Um, it may seem tricky because these snap over pretty tight and to pull them straight off the same direction we put them on, uh, it takes a lot of pressure and it seems difficult, but no worries because the struts are made of a, a fairly flexible plastic. So removing them, just grab it and twist it a little bit. You twist it and it pops right off. So that lets you take them off really easily but you don't get that kind of twisting action in the air, so they stay on. They'll never pop off in the air, but they come off in a second on the, on the ground when you want them to. And we're good to go. Okay, now the plane's ready to go. A couple last things we have to do is get the uh, batteries in the transmitter, and we'll show you how to get the battery in the airplane. So let's start with the transmitter. There's a little hatch on the back. Just put your thumb on it and pop it off. Um, and the, there's a spot for the four AA batteries. The orientation is shown, uh, shown in the back, just like in most, most uh, electronic devices that you're used to using. Um, so we'll put in the four batteries in the correct orientation. Snap them in place. Put the back back on. I like to turn it on to make sure it's working. The, they heard the tone and the, the green light came on, so they're in right. The transmitter is ready to go. Um, the next step is the, uh, the battery in the airplane. So first, let's make sure your battery should already have the Velcro on the back, but say you've got, you bought a spare and you want to get it ready, so the Velcro came in the box. 
we'll just take the uh, take the backing off of it, position it on this on the side of the battery without the label is always better so that you can uh, see your label so you know what what the battery is um, and also uh, it sticks better if it's not sticking over the label. Okay, so next we put the flight battery in the airplane. So to do that, we turn the airplane upside down so that we can see the battery compartment, which is right here under this plastic hatch. It's got a simple latch that you turn to the side and the hatch comes right off. And we'll notice this is the first time that we've uh, opened the airplane. There's a sheet of paper in here. Now this paper is in the place where the battery goes. The reason it's there is because this has some very important information. What, is, what it contains is uh, a, a warning um, telling you the importance of calibrating the compass before the first flight. Um, that's an important step and we don't want to forget it. If, if it's not done, the guidance system, all of the GPS stuff won't work as, as well as it should. So that's why it's in there, so you can't miss it. So let's set that to the side and we'll put the battery in. There's a Velcro strap we'll pull to the side. And then there's also the Velcro we have on the bottom of the battery, and it has Velcro in the pocket. So we'll put the, put the battery in the, uh, in the battery compartment, right about in the middle, front to back, because that does affect the balance of the airplane. It's not real critical with the Sportsman, um, but it is, it is a good idea to start right about in the middle, and that'll have you exactly where you want to be. So it's already stuck, and then we'll put the Velcro strap around it and secure that so it's even better. And, uh, and that's it. When we get to the flying field, we'll connect the flight battery to the airplane. Um, one thing you want to keep in mind is this white plug, that's used for charging. So once it's in the airplane, you just kind of tuck that to the side out of the way. And when we get to the field, we'll plug in the blue connector, it's called an EC3, to the corresponding blue connector in the uh, airplane. And we'll plug those together and uh, then put the battery hatch back on, put the latch back in place, and the battery is installed. And that completes the assembly of the Sportsman S+. For more helpful videos, go to HobbyZoneRC.com.